This week, we're talking with Lawrence and John Kasdan about what it was like writing solo together. Plus, Ewoks are finally coming to Battlefront 2. Take it away, Yoda Fountain. This is the Star Wars Show. From the Lucasfilm headquarters in San Francisco, here's your hosts, Andy and Anthony. Hello, and welcome to the show, a show whose hosts, you and me, talk about our biggest passion with the viewers every week. And that passion is? Motorcycles. JK, hmm. my babies, that was a patented goot scoop for you. Let's talk about Star Wars. She has to say whatever's in the prompter. The writer's mad at me for cutting my hair. Goot scoof. You know, every time we give you one of these things, it sticks. You're gonna have so many catchphrases. Yay. <laughs> On Sunday, Lucasfilm released a brand new 45 second TV spot for Solo, a Star Wars story entitled Crew. The spot gave us more looks at the infamous card game between Han and Lando, as well as a little more insight into the budding relationship between Chewie and Han. Then on Tuesday, another TV spot dropped showing more of the interior of the Falcon, our first vocal confirmation that yes, Lando has always called Han Han, and L3 having none of Lando's flirting. What does it all mean? Mm. Only 36 more days before we all find out. Battlefront 2 has added a brand new limited time mode that I think someone on the show is a little excited about. Kevin the Ewok, come on out and tell us about it. Kevin? Is Kevin even here? Kevin! I guess we'll have to talk about it then. Beginning today, all Battlefront 2 players can try out the brand new Night on Endor update. The update includes the limited time mode Ewok Hunt, which pops you in the middle of the forest in the dead of night, either as a stormtrooper on patrol or as an Ewok, stalking and protecting your village. That sounds like so much fun. I cannot wait to play that. For more information on Ewok Hunt and other additions coming to Battlefront 2 as a part of this update, check out StarWars.com. But seriously, where is Kevin? Kevin! He's watching the Star Wars show. <laughs> Today we're here at Lucasfilm with the Art and Science program. We had panelists from Industrial Light and Magic and Lucasfilm coming to talk to the students to help inspire and educate. This is what the Porg rig actually looks like. It's a puppet inside the computer that you move around. We have little controls on it to move every little bit. I personally liked looking at the different layers that they added to the screen. It feels so surreal. I know they don't exist, but like it's hard to exist that they don't actually. It's just a bunch of people in front of a computer. Charmaine Chan and her team of compositors used Python to create an automatic system so they could have multiple blaster shots at once so they didn't have to hand animate all of the blaster shots. So that was really cool to me because I'm learning Python. Being creative requires thinking on your feet and always being open to the new and the different. I'm really inspired by what I've heard today. Being an animator is something I want to do and I should probably continue doing that. It's really cool and I think I'm going to be a producer. So excited to be joined here in the studio by Lawrence and John Kasdan, the writers on Solo, A Star Wars Story. Thank you so much for coming in. My pleasure. My pleasure. Having written Empire and Jedi and then The Force Awakens, you have written the majority of Han's life here. <laughs> and you were working on Solo previous to TFA, That's right? That's right. When I agreed to do Solo, I said, I can't do this without John. He had helped us out on Force Awakens. He had been around the whole thing for a while. He had great ideas about Han. And I couldn't really face doing it myself without him. Obviously, you, as a Star Wars fan, had yeah. a very singular sort of childhood around Star it Wars. It was. It was crazy. <laughs> I mean, I sort of became a fan like a lot of kids in my generation through seeing it on video and the toys and then when George and Larry sort of continue to maintain a relationship, it's always been sort of a Star Wars family. We've been tangentially related. So when they sold the company, Larry had not told me anything about it. And I called him up. I said, I bet they're going to try to get you in there for something. <laughs> he was like, well, actually, we're in a meeting. I was like, I knew it. And then, you know, I've sort of kept it close. When this came up, it seemed like an opportunity for us to write something together, which we always wanted to do. I did want to write with John for years, but of course there's that wariness can a father and a son even possibly... be in the same room together <laughs> that much time it can be ragged but the good times which were most of the times were amazing so many of these characteristics that we see in han the ego and the bravado mm. like han's a guy who wants to walk into a room fully formed like yeah. han doesn't 
want you to know about no. Han. <laughs> he would never want this movie to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you take a character like that back even further? What we had was a character that we loved, who was enormous fun. It wasn't like we ever approached it like, okay, we're gonna fill in the backstory or the origin story of Han Solo. We had Han Solo, and we were gonna make a great crime movie around him. What we started with in A New Hope was a very cynical guy, and it allowed for a character arc that sort of naturally lent itself to this movie, which is, how do you become a cynical guy? And that's sort of fascinating to me, is to go back and tell this beginning, there's this sort of idea of, well, what needs to be told, and what needs to be sort of kept mysterious or kept a secret. And so yeah, what, what first popped into your heads as writers about how much to tell or how little to tell about Han? Han was always my favorite character. I loved him in A New Hope. I had enormous fun writing him for the next two. When he was on screen, I was involved. So I didn't approach it so much as what don't we know, but he was a living person in my life. And like any living person, you wonder about what was their youth like? How did they get to be the person that I met much later? Obviously, we're bringing in a couple characters that we already know. Do you write lines for Chewie or do we you did. write feelings for Chewie? In this script, we wrote every one of Chewie's lines. We wanted Alden, who was playing Han, to know what was being said to him. So he would know what to play, regardless of what he interpreted from the moan. Because there needs to be a very deep affinity between Absolutely. Chewie and Han. And so you can't have any, I would imagine, sort of ambiguousness between no. the two. No, but you know, it echoes the reality of filmmaking, which is you come in, the actors don't know each other. Other. And over the course of a difficult endeavor, they get to know each other and they have to trust each other. And that happened with Alden and Jonas. And people are so overwhelmingly into Lando. <laughs> Boy, it seems like. Huh? <laughs> There's something about Donald that you see him dressed that way. He does. And it was immediate. Everybody wants to see more. The other dichotomy in Lando is that he's this incredibly sort of loose, casual guy. But at the core of his story in our movie, is a very deep relationship with his co-pilot. We're talking about L3, right? L3. Now, yes. L3 is interesting because this is a droid that kind of upgrades herself yes. and, and kind of has more of a She's very emotional soulful. animus. There's an emotional core to her. With L3, you're instantly you know, enchanted by her. And the actress playing her is phenomenal. She's the female version of Donald. And the combination of that and her conception of what this droid should be like is so charming. You can't turn away. Talking a little bit more about Han's past, we did get to meet some new characters as well. Yeah. We got to see Kira. This is somebody who's known Han since he was a child, which I feel yeah. like is something Han must not love at all. We talked about Han growing up in an urban environment. He really grew up on the streets where he had to learn to be quick where he had to sort of survive. And we wanted him thrust into a sort of makeshift family. That sort of through line of found family that is yes, in all absolutely. the Star Wars And films. Kira and Han have a shared background that is very rough. Another character that I saw that I was instantly into because it's a character that has that sort of iconic Star Wars look. Can you tell us Emphis about this character? Emphis Ness. To understand who Emphis is, you first kind of think you got to understand who Woody Harrelson plays, which is a character named Beckett, who is a sort of highly trained, very lethal criminal. He's a real pro who's into big jobs and he runs a crew. But one of their competitors is a sort of more pirate-like gang. And the leader of that gang is Emphis Nest. All of movies builds on the backs of the people that came before. And now we're in a certain galaxy, and so that's a certain kind of story. But it did give us enormous freedom to draw from whatever we want. It's amazing. Well, I'm looking so forward to it. Thank you we're so much. We're looking forward to you I'm guys pleasure. seeing it. Yeah. Last week, we launched Cutie Watch 2018, and man, do you all love you some cuties. Tyler Ellis said, y'all are hyping the main Sabak table players, but who's not just taking its sweet time peeping everybody? 
Albino space bat, that's who. That's who indeed. <laughs> Kendall Schroeder went with this eight-eyed, two-headed cutie. Matt Cilia voted for Rio Durant. And Fred Martin Campo went with this handsome, six-eyed cutie. But the clear winner and my favorite cutie was, of course, Lando. Lando is always the cutest of the cuties. Thanks to everyone for submitting and to you for watching the show this week. And as always, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Talk to us in the community tab on Facebook. Read the articles on StarWars.com and download the Star Wars app. And remember that the cutie watch never ends. We should build like a storm tracker for all the incoming cuties. What, are we like local news now? For some, I think we are, yes. Okay, sure, yeah. Thanks for watching. May the force be with you. It's a cutie front coming in from the north. Nothing in the rule book that says a human can't be a cutie. We've got a high pressure cutie coming in like from here. It's like a whole jet stream of cuties. <sighs> from your mouth to God's ears.